Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 as Germany episode number 8. And really this is the continuation of our episode 7, the Battle of Jutland. And although it's called the Battle of Jutland, which was the biggest naval battle in World War One, one of the biggest naval battles of all time really, uh, and so although it's called this, it has this, you know, historic title and it probably draws really grandiose images. What has actually happened right now, besides, yes, the fact that two huge and just enormous fleets are fielded against each other, is that uh, we've only sunk one battleship, this Collingwood, and I'm pretty sure it's going down. And we've done pretty significant damage to this other one. We don't really have much to say so far, despite the amazing heroic efforts of DDS-60, which will receive commendations according to its amazingly heroic actions. The roleplay is amazing, uh, okay, awesome, I mean, there's not enough superlatives for me to use for the really nice roleplaying that we have going on. Um, <clears throat> in particular, I remember, I've read, so that I've actually been able to read the comments from uh, episode 7, and Russian Doke wrote a really good report, it was like, I think the second reply in his chain, about how he saw the Admiral for the first time, and then they got their orders to leave, and to ship north, I mean to move north, and we're going to intercept the enemy because we have some intercepted some some messages basically that said that the enemy fleet will be here. And now here we are. So um, let's get into the second half of this battle. Um, I think there's going to be two things I'm going to focus on. One is to keep our speed low, um, at least until we're in the thick of it. I really don't want our grades fouled, which is going to reduce our top speed, maximum speed for the rest of the engagement. As much as I can, I'd like to avoid that. So yeah, we will just try to avoid it. Um, so besides that one battleship that we pretty much have sunk, I'm, I should also say that we have sunk one destroyer. <clears throat> Let's also get these destroyers just pull off out of the way. I'm not very interested in them anymore. They've already done their job. The fact that we actually hit with, is amazing. So here we go. Start off okay. Looks like this was not a penetrating hit on the Morganstern, and this is the Collingwood that I really want to focus on. So yeah, we're landing hits on the sinking ship, a few hits here and there, and obviously on the sinking ship itself as well. So these things are actually so huge. We're gonna have to scroll up. Okay, so lots of hits on the sinking ship. Morganstern, another hit. I may even want to, let's halt fire, oh, there, um, 10 minutes. Stop firing for 10 minutes just so you don't waste ammo on the Collingwood. Actually, uh, one thing I wanted to point out is the, there's two groups, two ships, the Slash Vig Holstein, uh, who doesn't have her machinery. She's taken a, a hit. And also the same thing with the Sankt Kaiser. So she also has her machinery disabled. So um, for both of these, for both of these ships, we're gonna leave them attached, and we're gonna keep their divisions in the fight. My hope is that basically as the head of the snake wanders around, the tail of the snake will be able to kind of average over those turns, always take the shortest route between two points, which is a straight line. You know, it's constantly narrowing the distance she has to travel while the first one's the lead one snake. but. <clears throat> I didn't mention this, but another thing I want to do is, the first thing is maintain low great foul for top speed, but the second thing is I want to have really, really well organized lines. So there is something that um, I don't know how I can show it. Uh, who is turning? Let's just get one of these destroyers to turn wildly for a moment. You're actually going way too fast. So I guess, the, uh, shoot, I didn't mean to go that many, but you're not firing guns. So I'll we'll have to do a turn with somebody up here. And basically what I'm trying to say is the rate of fire is affected by like negative 300. So there's like crew quality which goes into this. There's um, ammunition, deliberate fire for example is one of them. Um, so here we can see that the total rate of fire is something. Now if I were to pick, let's make these guys, I don't want to do it. Well okay, let's just have them line up. I, I don't want them to be turning very often, but I want to demonstrate the point. So next chance we have with the them turning, I'll, I'll just look at the stats and we should see that a turning ship has like a minus 300. Oh, the Collingwood actually went down. That's fantastic because 
That means we won't waste our ammo on her anymore, which means I can actually get you guys to start firing again. So you are actually not needed to do that maneuver anymore. You can just sail off into the into the sunrise, I guess. <laughs> it's not sunset, it's the wrong direction. <laughs> Alright, wow. Ooh, repulse, which we I don't know. A scary name, but I don't think this repulse is pretty good. I'm really hopeful, in fact, that these are the negative two quality. 13 inch guns. Uh, which only the only negative quality negative two guns in the entire game possible at all are the ones that the UK starts with. So, but they do start with them, and maybe they're equipped. Okay, so let's see how we go here. You guys to come in, Collingwoods. So far, a good start to this one. Um, yes, and this is actually the next target. Basically, I would say there's a bullseye pinned very firmly on this calling wood. Although this is possibly trouble. This inflexible class of battle cruisers, they only have two turrets, but they are 14 inch guns. Extremely light armor. Glass cannons, really. Seven inch turrets. I mean, I, I really hope we could actually get a flash fire against these guys. How do we, how do we want to facilitate that? Or can we facilitate that? Maybe it's just sometimes we'll just have to let things go. I don't know, actually. That's it's interesting. Let's see how things progress in this. I think this line was going to end up... I mean, those battle cruisers are, are worth a lot of points, a lot of strategic points. They're very valuable, very expensive. So I might even um, send this division up. To assist and it looks like our entire force is heading north so we won't be leaving anybody behind by heading south oops yeah i think we'll end up doing this uh good non-penetrating hit two hits on the calling woods but yeah these are six inch shells so not much not very important Oh god, who's misunderstanding things? Alright, well let's just give them a correction to those orders so they get those as soon as they return to their senses. And you guys are still going 19. I might not want you to go 19. I think we do want these guys to go 19. What's the range to target? Just, just outside of torpedo range. Okay, Karsh, we're need you're needed. Wait, you guys are going the wrong way. So inflexible, there's the first hit. Maybe even six inch guns can do something here. Now the distance is 2.5, so they're in torpedo range. Haligalon took a hit. Pulse, two inflexibles though. We did get it, we actually delivered an 11 inch shell. I think we'll wait around one more turn before pulling back. I wanted to focus on this calling wood, but she's now kind of escaping. What kind of a mess do we have here? We have our dreadnoughts pulling in front of our battleships. <laughs> Well, that's, you know, let's take them down to cruise again. I don't want to lose um, the speed advantage that we have. I think those guys going 19 is fine. Everyone else, not, not so much. Okay. Again, the idea will be to maintain, okay, so good, oh, Kartoffelkopf, which is potato head. <laughs> Love the name. I don't know why, it's really funny. So we were able to land some hits. That is a brutal division right behind her. And by her I mean this division of battle cruisers. This is a brutal corner of the fleet for the for Germans. So let's pull them off and then I'll, I'll showcase this firing penalty, which I presume will show up now. We don't want two lines like this. I'm gonna pull the battleships back and then drive them back after the dreadnoughts have passed. We can do kind of the same thing with the Schlesian and the uh, Schleswig Holstein. Looks like these guys will also be kind of interfering, but okay, so now we're turning, we're taking a hit. You can see that fire ship turning is only minus 80. I guess I thought it was 300. I guess it depends on how much you're turning. Maybe the fact that we're hit and <laughs> you have a lot of damage is limiting our ability. 
Yeah, okay. Otherwise, we just continue to pour fire on their line. So just form up the line and let's do our let's do our best. Just present the best. It's a numbers game, right? We're just going to maximize the possibility of us landing hits. German efficiency is all I ask. Taking quite a few hits in the top over there. 18. So 18 has misunderstood their orders. We'll get them to return to something like that when they realize the error of their ways. These guys still haven't realized the error of their ways. Although they have located, or at least pointed out to me, um, the fact that the armored cruisers are kind of slipping on the south side, I'm trying to, it looks like, slip below our lines, flank us perhaps. Sending a, a, even a single battleship group over there will definitely deal with that. Although, I think right now, for now, we'll just, we'll, we'll not do that. <laughs> I don't, where are my light cruisers? Okay, so you guys are the closest light cruisers that are still um, controllable. Kartoppelkopf. Taking quite a few hits here. Inflexible? This lone inflexible? Okay, the Hansons, I mean, they're rolling over the top. Yeah, we'll just keep this going in a straight line. So let's get these guys up to squad max just so they can assume better position behind, or in front of, I should say, this group of dreadnoughts. And we'll have these guys make a major turn again to lead the formation. Okay, Schlesian Holstein and... Schleswig Holstein and Schlesian. It's just... They've combined themselves in my brain into Schleschi and Holstein. Oh, the light cruisers at least are coming back. Let's have them do it on the double. How's the, I hope the battle noise is about right. I was able to adjust it a little bit on the stream. Interesting, they are moving towards us. Is this like, what is going on here actually? Very interesting. They're in. They were doing my maneuver line abreast. So apparently it's usable even by the enemy. <laughs> All right, we're gonna slow down again. We're in our proper position. So we'll get these guys to go squad max, which is not very fast. Uh, just for a second more, just to make sure the line, the cohesion of the line is maintained. And you guys need to just pop out just to buy time. Oh, did Song Songkaiser finally detach? No, this is the Balong. Good. And we do want um, cruisers, so the Karsh is going to be tasked to get to the lead of the convoy, just to prevent. That'll be my only protection against light cruisers and, and the like. Okay, you guys, squad max, and then you guys have protection. So yeah, we do need this light cruiser squadron to head with all haste to the front of the line. Otherwise, the battle line's forming up nicely, which should mean that we do we don't. Oh God, I delayed too long. Not many hits in this. This is kind of appropriate for the time period too. There just wasn't that many hits. Now this can fill the gap which we have forming here. Although these guys are kind of insane, and what are the chances that we could land another torpedo hit? I need a, a moment to think. Um, I don't want these guys to do it. No, these guys have to get to the front of the line. If anything, these guys can do it. Yeah, we need our battleships to come help, but for now, we do have uh, two battleships holding that position, effectively, effectively gating the attempt by the British to penetrate our lines. I would like to call that the Lord, the Lord Nelson maneuver, <laughs> after the tactics used at um, Trafalgar. Ariadne, that's interesting. What are you? Tiny, tiny battleship. And you're taking some hits. 12 inch hits? Let's expand this a little bit. Collingwood also taking some hits. Okay, this is perfect. This is exactly what we want, right? Okay. Oh god. Oh no, no, no. You're, you're fine. You're fine. 
Who's you're not fine though an angle. Let's get you to go due north. You guys are 16. Oh, this is perfect. So Haligolon has taken a few hits. She looks okay. So has maximum speed of 17. Now we just exchange fire at a distance and hope that superior German gunnery, which was historic, I'm not sure if we'll find it in this game or not, but uh, let's see if superior German gunnery wins out. So far I'd say yes. Throughout the whole battle, probably more or less in our favor. Some good hits, and this is got one turret knocked out. Camberdown taking several hits. Which one? Yeah, this one. And this, oh, and then a different one. Yeah, we're spreading our damage around all over the place. Just hold the line. Hold the line. Okay, we're getting these guys, they should probably squad max back into position. So this camera down is actually taking quite a few hits. Yeah, but again, spreading love. We'd obviously prefer not to spread love. Ooh, we're finally landing some hits on those Ansons as well. These are very heavily armored. Like, let's take a look at the Bayern, which is firing. And what was the armor on that again? 10 inches of everything. So the Bayern is firing... Bayern, 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 Bayern. She has penetration of 10 inches at 8,000 yards, and she's firing at... 10,000. So we don't expect to actually do many penetrating hits. <sighs> Which means we really got to close the range or do something. I mean, this is a lot of hits, and the damage can still be done to the superstructure. We can start fires. I don't know. It's a, it's kind of a tough decision to make, whether or not we should or should not. I mean, we're landing hits, and that's going to cause... I mean, we can be hitting the superstructure. We get lucky, destroy the bridge, hit their fire control stations. So hitting is obviously better than not. Let's stay... Let's stay the course right now for a little bit. We're obviously doing really good work. In fact... Okay. I think it's time to make our big maneuver of the day. Let's wait a little bit longer. I'm going to start angling in. They are responding. AI in this game, by the way, is very, very good. <laughs> so I don't know how they did this algorithm, but it's extremely good. And these are the ones I'm most interested in. We're just, we're pecking on them so much that I feel like we could gain some advantage here. I really feel like we'll have an opportunity. Oh boy. So, <laughs> yeah, it was bound to happen though. We are taking some return fire. Some significant return fire, unfortunately. What's their squad max at? Okay, still 17. <gasps> oh, yes! So the Schleswig Holstein ends the day of one of the British battleships with a flash fire. Well, this that's a wonderful result. It looks like they're shying away. What's our <clears throat> current victory status at? Uh, two battleships. I mean, these guys are taking... Is that a waterline hit? Down to 16. Wow. Well, this is good. We can now focus on the next one. I was starting to angle... The idea was going to be to cut this group in half. I don't know if we can still do it. I think we're still going to try. And in the chaos which results, just hopefully pick up part more of the British ships. We're actually landing good damage on who? 
Oh, on the same ship. Different one. This is the same. Okay, so we have landed several 12 inch shells. She has much less armor. I mean, if the camera down have eight inches of deck, that is really not a lot. <laughs> All right, the turn is commencing. <clears throat> We're gonna go in. So I think, unfortunately, this is gonna require the use of our engines, which, I mean, we to be fair, we're pretty much waiting the whole, the entire time to use our, our maneuvers. So let's go ahead and begin this maneuver. They are turning away. Okay, so there's also something to be said here. We've done some good damage. Their fleet is a bit in disarray, but we could also draw use this opportunity to perfectly disengage. We're not going to. Okay, here we go. So, engines to maximum. Give her everything she's got. And this is what I want to see. So we're going to cross the T on the southern part of this force. Let me just straighten out the lines here. So we're executing basically a 90 degree turn to the left. And what is happening so far? This Drake has lost one of its turrets. It's got heavy damage. It's a very light battleship, but it's a battleship. And as a battleship, it's worth as many strategic points as any other battleship. So yeah, we do want to hit it. We do want to take it out. Heavy damage on that one, supposedly. I think that they're responding well. They're turning away. Probably not going to be able to gain a huge advantage from this maneuver, but obviously the goal is to just gain as much of one as we can. I see their destroyers are starting to weed their way over. So we'll get our light cruiser and our armored cruiser to react appropriately. Yeah, this has gone pretty well though. Pulse taking light damage. Onward. Okay, so, so far not too much damage on our end. And now what we want to do, if, oh, we can't really, the lead division is actually so light on. Okay, I think we want to do this. I'm going to turn back because the destroyers are going to come our way. I believe that's what I see happening. So we're going to turn back this way, but the, the rest of them will not do that. We're gonna have a big separation of the line. We got some messy situation going on here, nobody look. Okay, divert, divert. Do we have an armored cruiser that can go with them? Yes, you. Valmung, <clears throat> you're going to head south towards the Ariadne, which is where my entire southernmost battle line is going to go. We're just going to try to close off the ones that, yeah, we're, that we're doing damage to. And also, somewhere down here, as we already mentioned, there is an armored cruiser. Or, you know, a group of them. But that was a good, effective turn that did seem to persuade them to, per, you know, to pursue a little bit longer. Get you to go down to 20 again, just preserving engines as much as possible. When the moment is right, we'll be very happy that we still have engines available. So it's good that we're actually able to hit these uh, cruisers as well. I mean, these destroyers with our cruisers. And the Balmung is making its move towards the Ariadne. Good. So these guys, squad max. Beer Hall taking a hit. Not too surprising. This destroyer is really going to get a good position if we're not careful. Yeah, she's too far away to launch, which is good. We're still dragging them up. This dreadnought group has not gone to max speed yet. They're actually still playing it safe, which is really nice. I think it's about time for them to do it. Okay, the song cars are finally dis uh, detached. Whoops. No, she didn't. That's my light cruiser group. 
Okay, so... Oh, this Ariadne is... She's going in circles. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yes, absolutely go. Move together. Colin would take another hit. So this is the one I think we can get a few of those. I think we can get those. What is this Blackwater doing? Making me very nervous. Okay, we'll pull off with this group and we'll pull in with this one. Now, obviously losing some ammo here. This was medium on fire. I think we're going to be able to get that one as well. And as long as we don't take a torpedo at the end here, this will be a very big success. It's it's going to be incremental progress. You know, this is just not the day this this day and age basically this time period is not really. Got it. You know what? I really wish I had is Karsh, Squad Max. Take care of this destroyer. Okay, there's her launch. She's definitely within range to launch. Yeah, we'll just. There's two ways I can do this. <laughs> I'm going to choose this way. <laughs> We're going to move in. The aggressive way. We're going with the aggressive route. Is it time to kick these guys? I think so. All right. It's going to take a couple minutes for those engines to get us for the speed to actually increase to maximum. We'll wait one more on these guys. Light cruisers. Still should be on the outside. The destroyers haven't closed enough to, to present like a, a desperate target. I think this Ariadne is going to go down. Good support by the uh, bomb monk who is taking hits on her way in. Okay, good. This Blackwater is finally taking some hits. It's going to hopefully minimize her ability to do damage. But we've actually done a nice battlefield maneuver. We have the Dreadnoughts moving in quickly. I'm very happy with the maneuvering so far. Landing hits, Ansons, uh, it's 11 inch, it's probably not going to be doing much, but hopefully those are hitting the superstructure. Maybe we're using high explosive, I don't know. Yeah, this whole line, I think we just have this one cleave a line southwest right through anything that's in its way. Ariadne's, I think, probably a goner. Good help. Good help from our light cruisers. Karsh doing okay. Taking some hits. Alright, this Ariadne is like a goner. We aren't going to fire torpedoes. She's spinning in a circle. Would be ra relatively hard to catch to, you know, get her so, I always get scared when there's a pop-up. <laughs> Armor was pushed in on the Bayern. Ariadne's taking more hits, which is good. Nine inch. What, what is her armor? Wow, she's armored like an armored cruiser. You'd almost wouldn't call her uh, an armor uh, battleship, but an armored cruiser. The Drake, which is another pretty viable target. For finishing her off. I mean, we'd have to go against these destroyers, which I don't want to do. And they're actually already making their move. They are two nautical miles. They're very close. Alright, I think we're going to pull north with this group. Squad max and pull south with this group. Okay. Ariadne is still taking hits. I think that at this point she might have recovered her rudder control, but she's not going to be... I don't think she'll be able to utilize it. <laughs> she'll probably be dead. Sherwell's taking some hits. This is really good to see. We can sink some more destroyers. They're actually, you know, reasonably good points. It's, it's going to be a lot easier to sink nine destroyers than it is to sink one battleship a lot of the time. So, the, yes, this Ariadne is going down, and she doesn't look like she's recovered her rudder after all, but I don't think it'll matter in the end. Okay, 
exe, Drake, Collingwood, exe, Anson, Ariadne, Ariadne. Yeah, we are chasing them off though. This is good. This is kind of having. This is kind of going to be a fun excursion. <laughs> I'm going to put these guys down to cruise just because we, we're going to need their speed if they come up against this escort group. So the Sherwell's already down. Let's get the Karsh to pull a little bit north. I'm a little nervous she'll get overwhelmed. Ariadne's definitely going down. Some more hits on this. Oh, this is... The south was very successful in this fight. Oh, damn it. I was just about to give these guys orders, and they decided to move north. A lot of signals being misunderstood, but this is, you know, part of the way battles went back in the day, so let's not be too upset about it. I mean, it's unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, this Ariadne, I assume, is going down. I have some destroyers already already looting the, <laughs> looting the corpses. Really uh, picking up survivors, though, is what they're actually doing, which is very noble. Noble thing for them. Light cruisers this way. What is going on? Okay, so this is actually the dreadnought line is getting caught in amongst the line of breast folk of the beer halls. Oh, yeah, that's right. They've misunderstood their orders. So they're, there's no way we're going to recover them. Which means that this is my lone group that is able to help out in this area right now. Well, if we can manage to take, like, the Drake, actually, keep, you know, maybe just move due west. If we can take the Drake out, I will be pretty happy about that. We're, we're landing, you know, we've really got them on the run. We're driving them off. Okay, let's go for this Drake. After that, we'll pull back. Karsh, you don't look well. Actually, in fact, you're doing fine. Oh, it's because both of your turrets are disabled. <laughs> You're only firing your secondaries at this point. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. It's, good things could be better. Your health is fine, but... <laughs> let's put you down to 20. I wanted you to go after this destroyer anyway. Take these guys down to 20. They've gotten to where I want them to be. What the hell is going on? These guys are... None of them reacted with their leader. Okay, well, that's actually kind of fine. He's misunderstood his, his orders, but the rest of the group is still continuing on boldly. This is the one from earlier that had the... Oh, okay. So this is the one where we were, we're diverting, basically. We're actually landing a few more hits on the Anson as well. That would be a great target. Let's pursue it. Hit. Still hitting the area name, which is good. And this Blackwater. Good, good Karsh. Is that the Karsh? Yeah, it is. Come on, Sieg. Return to your senses, my friend. So I think that this line is going to be able to cut off the Drake. We almost have a, a German <laughs> Blitzkrieg... Uh, Envelopment going here. Okay. Every time those pop-ups come, I'm scared. Okay, the bombong has taken a fair, fair amount of damage now. How's her flooding? Controlled? In good shape. So I guess that this is our our next target. Is this Collingwood? I'm actually trying to approach her maybe a little bit too quickly. Let's get these guys a squad max. Uh, I wanted to approach her in order to um, put a torpedo in her, but let's not be so hasty. Let's pull the ball among back a bit and just bide our time. I think we can do things slowly but steadily. Don't need to rush things too much. Haste makes waste. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Yeah, this Drake is definitely in a bad shape. I think we're going to be able to knock it out. So we are actually in the end of this fight, uh, really picking off some stragglers. And that is... 
mean, this is how we want these battles to go. Kind of reminds me of the Ancient Wars. Uh, it's the person who broke first, which had the most damage done to them. And that doesn't necessarily have to be the case in Dreadnought engagements, by the way. <laughs> We're kind of getting lucky here. That they, I don't know why they're even breaking. And one thing we'll have to really watch out for is when we're done, when all is said and done, are we going to be able to disengage very easily or will they, will they be turning back on us? So that's one thing we do not want to over, like basically just uh, push too far. Getting back after that will probably be a very difficult thing. So yeah, these guys are gonna go up against that Collingwood. I don't even know where this guy came from, but they're definitely going slow. Yeah, they're at five. So that's good. So far, the Dreadnoughts have held. I mean, they have pretty great armor. 12 inches. I mean, you could see that our 12-inch guns, which are what? Quality zero? Okay, that's not that great, but um, our quality zero 12-inch guns can barely penetrate 10 inches of armor at, you know, 8,000 yards. So, actually, we do want to pursue south. Okay, what is going on here? Is it the Sankaiser? All right, this is the time point where we're gonna set this squadron to do what it's capable of, not what it's, um, not what its group can do together. Essentially, we don't care. We we need the speed more than we need the cohesion. And so far, I mean, this is really working out for us. We're even landing other hits on other battleships. Oh god, Legolon has lost electric power. We'll probably detach her. <laughs> well, we'll send the squad to squad max. She'll obviously just start sitting. <laughs> she's not going to be able to do anything with no electric power. In fact, she's actually a very bad target. Uh, I mean, a very easy target. Not a good thing. So we've actually hit this Blackwater enough times. I'm going to hope that the Karsh has at least driven her off. And she's going to move to protect the Heligolon. I guess assuming somehow that she sees her starting to slow down. We're obviously privy to that information faster than her captain would be. But so to the AI. So we, we both sides get the benefit of faster than normal communication. Ball monks following into line. This is good. This is what I was hoping for. In fact, this camera down is also not in good shape. I mean, we don't know how accurate those damage reports are, but... We certainly know that this one's accurate because she's actually pretty much dead stopped. Here's the Drake. And you know what? This Dreadline, this Dreadnought line can just keep pushing. We will actually be doing somewhat of an envelopment. So basically, the entire German Navy is steaming west. And if we can t pick off anybody else in the, in the final push here. Okay, Balmung, you're going to head due north to maybe clip off this drake. She actually is probably very easily penetrated by your armor. <laughs> I mean, by your guns. Her, she has very little armor. That means that we're going to send the Slushy and Holstein to kind of fill this gap. Look at this Württemberg. She just does not care. It's just like full steam ahead. Let's get the light cruisers to get a broadside on these destroyers, which could be incoming. And yeah, again, the Karsh will help out over here. Oh, wow. Oh, yes, this is good. Wow, we landed three 12 inch shells against the Collingwood here. Wow, that's great. Oh, Henselorn, uh, very good. Fantastic gunnery. We could take out, we could actually, this could swing wildly in our favor. Like I'm, I'm seeing these results, I'm, I'm almost incredulous. We have to be very careful about torpedoes. Let's do a little bit of uh, evasive maneuvering just to prevent torpedoes. Drake coming, okay, but hopefully it won't, hopefully, fingers crossed. Drake, she's now taking four hit, okay, six inch guns, but even against this, I think that that just spreading fire, doing whatever. It could be a good thing. Camera down. Supposedly heavy damage as well, although she's probably part of the group that's going to get away. This one's not. Crusader. I do like to see these the destroyers being hit. They're also very easy to sink. 
And we're actually doing really good damage to the Anson. Really good damage. Bosuhu, Vertenberg. Where's the rest of you? Oh, you're, you're... Well, you're going alone. It's not really the time for German heroics. Or is it? I don't know. Question mark. What do we see? Drake, camera down, camera down. Collingwood, Collingwood. <laughs> Second. It's working. It's working. Okay, look at this. this is this is we're seeing the big hits coming now. So this is probably a dead ship. Balmung actually only has one. Tur no, she has two. So we can actually choose to launch against both. All right. I think at this point we have to commit something to something. Or do we? Maybe that's just. Maybe this is just hot air escaping my mouth. I don't know if what I'm saying is true. It seems too good to be true. It seems way too good to be true. Okay, Anson. Oh my gosh. The Anson. She must have had her rudder hit. Okay, all forces will converge on her. Absolutely. We still have these very dangerous, very potent inflexibles up here. Now, if we're able to actually get them, that would be great, but... Okay, what do we have this turn? Every turn, I feel like it's it's moving... The tide is shifting further and further in our favor. These are like a bunch of dead ships, it feels like. And we're, we're tightening the noose on this entire group. Look at this camper down. What is it doing? We have... We need... Uh, support ships everywhere with torpedoes. <laughs> we don't have enough. <laughs> Unfortunately, those destroyers don't have reloads. Okay, we're going to make this... We're going to shift south. It's officially time to close the loop on the Ansons, on all these other ships. This is the, the final push. And from there, we will break off and disengage. Good armor. I mean, the armor is holding up. This is another thing to say. It's the armor is definitely holding up. Oh, this one's down? <gasps> this is amazing. Okay, so... Launch at, if you can, this Drake, just to make sure she's out. Think that she's done for. And we have two Ansons turning. I think that they are not, this is not, I think this is a decision. Which is dangerous, because there they are, firing their guns away. And our armor held up on the first one, but you never know how long that'll stay for. So yeah, let's get both light cruisers to shift. This entire group to shift. The cars will kind of take up the outside, the Sieg shift. This is insane. What are they doing? I don't know. Oh, did we miss? I guess we missed. Did she not launch? She did launch. Probably should have hit already. And we're not aiming at her even. So does that mean she's just for sure going down? I mean, she's on fire, heavy damage. I think she's going down. We do want to clean up, though. <laughs> I have no idea what this Anson's doing. And we're not landing enough hits, frankly, on the Ansons, considering how close they are and how dangerous they are. 14-inch <laughs> shells. I mean, dreadnoughts are, our dreadnoughts will not hold up against much of that. Otherwise, a good turn. Another, The thick armor of our dreadnoughts is still doing well for us. Okay, Drake taking some more damage. Camera down. Oh, there it is. The Manson's taking some hits. Oh my gosh, they've already made it all the way to the south. Okay, let's let this Anson. Uh, inside or outside? Inside or outside? Yeah, this torpedo did miss. Alright, we're going to keep him inside. We're going to try to trap him. We have two Ansons, though, unfortunately. I have Schles Schlesian and Schleswig Holstein break off there with Vertenberg. Light cruisers, seal the gap. Squad max, this is important. This is where everything should be at squad max. Oh, God, no, 20. <laughs> Everyone should be giving everything. This is the, the final moment. The final moment in the fight. So we need everyone at maximum speed. And everyone is. I don't know what's going on here.
Great Britain Battle 9 reestablishes contact with flagship. Interesting. Not really sure what they were doing. Sankt Kaiser took a hit. Whole Hudson Southern finally took a penetrating hit from the Anson. Which which Anson's the one? Okay, so we're actually trying to pull back from her. We just want to capture the ones below it, basically. The noose is tightening, but they're they're reacting. Oh, bow. Okay, good. So we did get the Drake eventually. Who is out of main ammunition? This is insane. Who is out of main ammunition? Wait, where does it say? I don't know if that pop-up is reported. I, I can't remember who it was, but it doesn't matter. They're going to still use their secondary guns. I guess that's what we'll, what we'll be doing. Song Kaiser, this is, by the way, a great time. Let's get her specifically to focus on fire, because she should be, on this Anson. And yes, it does look like she is. Furtenberg will also be ch chasing her down. Light cruisers, we've kind of closed the noose on her. That's the goal. We're pulling back. We don't care about those battle cruisers. Karsh is unfortunately not going to go squad max because she needs to kind of stay with the Heligoland. All right, this is dangerous torpedo territory, so we're going to do as much as I would like to continue to put damage down on this Anson. She actually looks fine in terms of how much, you know, destroyed turrets and stuff. Um, okay, Celestian's coming down here to close off that one. Yes, just close off on the Ensigns. If the Ensigns are down, I actually feel very confident we can just plow through the rest of the ships. And this is 47 minutes. I don't want to, I didn't want this to go that long, but it looks, this might be a part three. Unfortunately, most unfortunately. <laughs> were they trying to break out west? What are they doing? I don't understand. They were, the things were going very well for them, I think, in the very beginning. Okay, so that's really Holstein. Taking some hits. Yes. Good, so we'll just have her go squad max southeast. And the cars will kind of escort her. <clears throat> Swing the light cruisers this way. This group is just going to kind of come down from the north. This light, cru light cruisers are going to drop, are going to be preventive. Do we actually hit the destroyers? Okay, this group, this Hanson actually took a big broadside. Only six inch guns though. Still, those can chip up, you know, everything else. This Collingwood probably sinking as well. It's on fire with two turrets down. This one is on fire with one turret down, but it took a torpedo as well, so we know it's going down. Um, this next on, okay, Balmong is the cleanup crew. <laughs> Go on to this camper down next. I think all these ones are going down. And the more important thing is, the crazy thing is we're trapping this Anson there with it. So they're going to swing in and the Dreadnoughts are going to swing south to prevent the Anson from being able to retreat, retreat in that direction. Boy, we just traded pretty severe blows with this Anson. Um, looks like we came out okay from it. And that's all we're seeing now is it's beautiful. It's music to my ears or really just a lovely thing for my eyes to see that the Ansons are what we're targeting now. Except for one random repulse hit. Okay, come on. Let's finish this out strong. Come on, boys. All right, see, so pull back a little bit. All right, we're chasing her down. As you can imagine how crazy this pursuit would be. But we need, okay, discipline, discipline. Just maintain a, a shred of discipline, though, in this whole thing. Balmung's actually, she's got a shot on the, she's got a shot on the Anson. She has no port side, no! Okay, ramming speed. Down the torpedoes, full steam ahead. That's my favorite quote. <laughs> How many times a series do I say that? <laughs> a thousand. 49 minutes. But we're so close. I feel I can feel it slipping. I to feel it. And I really wanted to get to the end of the battle so that I could actually modify the, um, the budget stuff. Get rid of those. Uh, we're actually, we're going to have to navigate through all these things. <laughs> Get rid of the budget issues that we were going to have. Oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's working. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there.
Oh my gosh, the Zanson's actually... Where is she going? Only medium damage. This is the one we care about most right now. Hit! Yes! Yes! Well delivered, Balmung. Well delivered. That's going to be very tough for the Zanson deal. She's down to five knots immediately. Okay, other light cruisers need to move into pursuit of the other Anson. Feel like we're just going to pull back after this fight. We do have one other Anson is pursuing. And that's not something I really want to deal with at this point. We've already done extremely well. Oh my gosh, the Sieg has landed two 12-inch shells and a barrage of 6-inch shells against the Anson. Still not reporting any turrets destroyed or anything like that, but... Okay, we're back up. The Heligolon is back, has basically restored functionality. It's good. These light cruisers are very close. We'll be in top in pursuit, I should say, at top speed. And our, light, our uh, lighter battleships are also going to continue the chase. Oh, looks like she's trying to spin north. Now, we do have a Karsh here. The, the Karsh here. Not a Karsh, but the Karsh. Who can provide um, torpedo coverage. I'm actually... I think that, unfortunately... I don't... I'm going to wait one more turn before we send... I want the, the Bayern to move north, but I want the Sieg to move south. Can I detach? I don't think so. All right, well anyways, it's up to 51 minutes. I can see that we're not gonna be able to finish this battle in this episode. So we'll put this one to rest here. Um, I really hope not to be doing battles of this length in the future, just a, an FYI. <laughs> I did, we really wish I could have say, done a little bit better. Anyways, we'll, we'll bring this one to a close here. So for now, thanks for watching, and until the next one, take care.